Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. So today we've got a very, very exciting video um, and update on the diamond turning lathe project. Um, as you may have noticed, this is not the spindle that you may be familiar with if you've seen any of the videos on my channel. Um, and I'm gonna get into why this is not that spindle in just a second, but first uh, let me give a little bit of backstory. And I promise in just a minute, there'll be some really cool precision engineering to go over. So recently, a coworker and I attended the ASPE 36th Annual Conference in Minneapolis. Um, that's the American Society of Precision Engineering, uh, if you're not familiar. Um, but it was an absolute blast. We met a ton of awesome companies, saw some crazy technology, um, just had a really cool time overall. But one of the best companies that we met, uh, and I may be a little biased, is Professional Instruments. Now, if you're at all familiar with um, precision engineering, you've probably at least heard of Professional Instruments um, and maybe their air bearing spindles. Uh, they make the best air bearing spindles on the planet, um, basically bar none. I know Robin has had some experience working with them in his, uh, his old job, um, but they are the masters when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, their spindles have often sub-micro winch uh, TIR error motion, which is just absolutely crazy. Anyways, we met the guys over there, uh, the Arnesons, uh, Byron Knapp, Great guys, um, we got to talking about our project that we're working on here. Anyway, they thought it was pretty cool. Um, we went for a, a factory tour since they're based in Minneapolis, saw a bunch of cool stuff. And long story short, uh, they actually ended up sending us two spindles, which I know is absolutely crazy. Um, we're super grateful for it. Uh, absolutely mind blowing that they would do that for us, but. That's obviously huge, huge news for the project. Uh, that's gonna make things a lot easier and help out a lot. So let me go into sort of what the plan is here, what we've got and what we're gonna do with it. So this here is not what they sent us. Um, what they sent us is inside of this, but we've done a lot of work on it already. Um, we're gonna dive into all the engineering that went into this in just a moment here. But to start, grab the other spindle, it's still in its wrapping. Here's what we've got. Here's what they gave us. PI Biconic Pivot Air Bearing Spindle. Uh, it's four inches in diameter, so it's a bit smaller than mine, um, albeit a lot nicer. So our task is basically to integrate this into the design of the, the Gilbert machine. Because, let's be honest, no matter how good I make my spindle, and don't worry, I am going to finish it. I'm not giving up on that now that I have these. Um, so I, I will be finishing that. But no matter how good I make that, uh, with the tools that we have here, the bottom line is we're never going to make one that good. We can make one that's pretty darn close, but we're not going to be able to match their uh, levels of precision. So for the actual diamond turning lathe, we're going to be using uh, the PI spindles. Anyway, that leaves us with the task of now taking these raw spindles and integrating them into the design. And that's what you're seeing here. So all we've really done is we've made a cast iron housing here, um, bored it out, uh, ground a couple critical faces. This front face is ground, uh, it's underneath this flange here, and then this bottom face is ground square and flat, quite nicely, I might add. And the whole spindle just slides in. And then these mounting holes on the front, which you can see, are used to affix it to this flange, which pulls it up against uh, this face and lines everything up square and parallel. And that provides us a really nice way of um, holding on to the thing without 
clamping it and possibly distorting, uh, distorting the spindle. Um, in the back here, this is our solution for motorization because keep in mind these spindles are just spindles. There's no sort of motor associated with them. So we have to figure out the power system by ourselves. Um, this guy right here is actually a three phase brushless motor that we had lying around from an old semiconductor robot that we took apart. Um, got it off surplus a while ago, but we just had this motor and it happened to be the exact right size where this is four inches, the spindle OD is four inches. All we have to do is make a little spacer here and the motor fits on perfectly like that. So I'll insert some pictures here so you can see um, exactly how this all goes together. But basically we took the rotor of the motor, bolted it to the rotor of the spindle, and the stator is simply held around it. So this is still a completely contactless drive system. Um, we've just, we're just holding the uh, coils over the rotor, which is connected to the, the spindle rotor. And then the only thing that leaves us with to figure out for the spindle is the work holding. Um, and this is a really critical part of it because the thing with diamond turning lathes, they're not roughing machines. You cannot start out with a big old block of material and take off a bunch of cubic inches to get it down to nominal size. So the problem that we are presented with that needs to be solved is we need to find a way to rough out blanks of whatever we're cutting. Let's say it's a parabolic mirror for a telescope. So maybe our starting stock would look something like this, just a aluminum disc, but we need it to be a parabolic uh, concave contour which we can then load onto here, have it be running absolutely true, so that way we can come in with our MCD tool and simply finish it off um, and do take off only the last little bit of material. So requirements are very high repeatability, very accurate um, positioning, but it also needs to be rigid enough to uh, hold it on here for being turned. So I'll show you in just a sec here, but you can sort of see what we have. This is something called a hail coupling. Um, it is a type of quasi kinematic coupling designed by Leighton Hale, um, who is a PhD student under Alex Slocum. But I'll take this I'll take this guy off here so you can see how we're doing it. Basically all this is, is three little lobes with these 45 degrees flats uh, milled on them or ground on them. And you can see they line up like that. So very simple to manufacture, not perfectly uh, kinematically constrained, but these end up being extremely extremely repeatable and reliable and because they're technically flat on flat they can be also extremely um, capable as far as they can transmit some torque as well they're not they're not a uh, super floppy or anything um, so here on the spindle rotor we've got the the chuck if you will which is and this is just a prototype this one's made out of 4140. The final is going to be made out of P20 tool steel. Um, so you can see the most of it's sandblasted. The critical surfaces are lapped, and then the shiny spots you see there are where we stoned it with some flat stone. So as you can see, these are not um, not super flat surfaces. Um, this is really just the pathfinder right now, but the final will be a lot better than that. Um, and then to hold our work on there is actually a drawbar. Um, funnily enough, it doesn't, not something you'd think to see on a ultra precision machine, but this is all it is, just a little drawbar here. So just a piece of precision shafting, um, precision ground shafting 
which we've cut quarter 28 thread on and then put on a very uh, nicely done uh, knob, if you will, because finger tightening is more than enough here. So throughout the entire spindle, or the rotor of the spindle, has some very, very precisely reamed quarter inch holes um, through the center, as you can see there. So this drawbar is held perfectly centered uh, within the axis. You can feed it through like that. And then whatever our work piece is, we simply have a threaded hole in the center and can then screw it on. So place the work there, tighten it up, give it a little snug, and there you go. Now you're ready to ready to machine. So this is kind of it seems pretty simple, it's because it is. Um, but it actually works very, very well. So just these really crappy preliminary tests, um, it's easily repeating under uh, 20 millionths, which is pretty impressive, um, at least on the diameter that is. So what the workflow is gonna look like for this is, to start with your piece of stock. You can either mill in this feature as we've done here, or you can pick up one of these uh, hardened ones and bolt it onto the back of uh, your stock, depending on how uh, accurate you think need, need things to be. Um, but once that feature's on there, you'll put this in a pallet in the CNC. So we're gonna make a fixture, which is basically a very precisely ground block with this feature milled into the top of it. So you can put this in the CNC, like basically rough the whole thing. Again, to use the example of the mirror, come in here, hollow this guy out, leave about a thousandth or so of material left. You can then take that out of the CNC, come over to the lathe and bolt it on. And in theory, that feature that you just milled will be located on the spindle axis um, to within less than a micron, um, radially, axially, and in, in tilt. So that is the plan for work holding. A couple other little details real quick. Come around the back here to the stator, you'll notice there's these two threaded holes um, in the rear of the stator and these go like all the way in so I can see the motor rotor through these. Um, these were originally mounting holes in their in their first use but what we're going to retrofit these into is a, a sealing system for the stator. So obviously the drawbar here it's coming through a hole in this and we don't want stuff to get in there so what we're going to do is plug up one of them and have the other actually be an air port. So we're gonna feed air in there. And this brass knob is very, very close to the diameter of the hole in the stator that's going through. So as you might imagine, all we're really doing here is just setting up an air purge seal. The other concern with ultra precision machine design obviously is thermal effects. Um, and the way we're going to combat that with this spindle is basically just by passive cooling and allowing things to come to equilibrium. Um, so as opposed to having a cooling jacket or um, a, a preheater or whatever, um, we're just gonna let this thing warm up before it's used. This type of motor is fairly efficient and should come to, and shouldn't generate much heat to begin with, but due to this stainless spacer, this large aluminum area back here, it should come to a thermal equilibrium rather quickly. And I think that's about it for now. I'm trying to go through my head and think of all the noteworthy um, details and things that I need to mention on this, but 
Uh, basically, I just wanted to make a quick video um, talking about what we have now and what's going to come up next. Um, so yeah, expect, expect lots of cool content with these coming up soon. Here's a fun little demo you can do with it. It's basically because it has a decent amount of inertia and uh, zero friction. It's That rotor stays fixed in space, even if I move the housing all around. Kind of neat, but... Anyways, that is that. Um, again, big thanks to PI for donating these to the project. Um, right now I'm working on actually getting this research funded through my university. I'm applying for a, a undergraduate fellowship thing. Um, so that'll actually end up accumulating in a paper um, once all this is done. So that'll be really nice. Um, PI wants to see that too. So, yeah, big things on the horizon. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sure there'll be lots of questions. Just drop them in the comments. I love answering them. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching.